All right, in this section, we're going to talk about one of the, the big topics in physics, which is called Newton's laws. And so be ready to write down some notes. Let's talk about Newton's first law of motion. As I go along, you'll probably want to pause if I go a little too quickly and write down the notes as we go. Newton's first law of motion. An object in motion stays in motion. The other part of the law says, and an object at rest stays at rest. So if an object is moving, it will stay moving. If an object is stayed still, it will stay there, except until they are acted upon by unbalanced forces. Let me explain real quick. You see a picture of a soccer ball right here. If I were to take a soccer ball, Newton's laws don't take into account gravity, or excuse me, friction, like rolling on the ground. Let's pretend that you took this soccer ball and you rolled it on ice. Newton's first law says an object in motion stays in motion, it would roll forever on that ice. It'll never stop unless it's acted on by an other force. It hits something, somebody kicks it, somebody stops it. That's an added force. Now at the same time, the other part of Newton's law says an object at rest will stay at rest. So if I don't move this ball, if I let it just sit there, it'll sit there forever unless it's acted on by a force, unless wind blows it, somebody kicks it, okay? That's what it means by having unbalanced forces, okay? So unless you act on it by a force, something that's rolling will roll forever, unless something acts on it. Something sitting still will sit there forever unless it's acted upon. So that's Newton's first law. Now along with Newton's first law is inertia. And there's the definition for it. The tendency for an object to stay at rest or moving in a straight line at constant speed. The mass, m, measured in kilograms of an object, determines its inertia. We'll talk about inertia here in a minute. But here's a good example in the picture. Whenever there's a train, the train has a whole lot of weight. And as it's going down the track, if it had to stop, let's say that a car pulls out in front of it, that train can't just hit its er, brakes and stop. It's going to take a long time for this object to stop. Why would it take a long time to stop? Well, it has lots and lots of mass. Weighs many thousands of times heavier than your car does. So it takes miles and miles and miles to start for this train to get up to speed, and it takes miles for it to stop. It has lots and lots of inertia. And so part of Newton's first law has to do with mass. And we're going to see that here in just a minute. Then there's Newton's second law of motion. You may want to pause the video and write this down, then I'll talk about it. All right, Newton's second law of motion is force equals mass times acceleration. Okay? Matter of fact, in mathematical terms, what that looks like is this F equals m a. Same thing. There's the formula actually written right there. Weight, the pull of gravity, is commonly measured force. Okay? Force is equal to mass times, a, times acceleration. If something's dropping due to gravity, gravity is always the same. 9.8 meters per second squared. Let me show you a shortcut again. Whenever you have to use this formula on the chart, they give you gravity right there. G, acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. If you don't know that's there, you can't work any of the problems that use gravity. So if an object is dropped, let's say you drop a book out of a window, the force that it hits the ground is going to be equal to the mass of the book times the acceleration. Well, what's making that book accelerate is gravity. And gravity is always going to be that number. They may not tell you that number in the formula, but they gave it to you on the formula sheet. So it's super important that you realize gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, you don't have to write that number down. It's given to you. So force equals mass times acceleration. Now let's look at that law in a little more detail. Let's take something like this dump truck. Newton's second law of motion. The greater the mass of an object, 
the greater the force required to change the motion. Well, let's do it like this. Force equals mass times acceleration. That dump truck has a big mass. That's why I made that big M. It doesn't have to be driving very fast. The acceleration down the road, it's not falling in this case, it's driving down the road. So it's going to be going like that. It's acceleration. Boy, if it hits something, there'd be a whole lot of force because there's a lot of mass. Because of this formula, force equals mass times acceleration. You have a big mass, and even if you have a small acceleration, you're going to have a big, big force. Let's look at the opposite. Let's say a running back in football. The greater the acceleration of an object, the greater the force. Well, if the formula is F equals M times A, let's say this guy's running really fast toward the line in football. When he goes to, somebody goes to tackle him, even though he may not have a whole lot of mass, he's running so fast, there is a big, big force that he has. So if either one of them change, you have a big force. That's the mathematics of Newton's second law. You can have a very large object moving slow, or you can have a small object moving very fast. And they both have a huge force. That's how those running backs in football work out and do such a good job. Here's an example of a question that I found that was on a tax test. We'll look at the answer in a second. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can answer it using this formula. All right, let's see what they tell us. Frog leaps from its resting position at the lake's bank onto a lily pad. The frog has a mass of 0.5 kilograms. All right, well, let's go ahead and use this formula. If it has a mass of 0.5 kilograms and its acceleration of its leap is 3 meters per second squared, so he's not falling, he's jumping, so he had 0.5 kilograms. Uh, the math there says multiply. So I'm going to grab my handy dandy calculator and let's see what we get. 0.5 times 3. The answer I get 1.5. Let's see if that's one of the answers. Ah, I see the answer. This is the one I would bubble. Let's see what they give us here and see if we're right. Formula chart says F equals MA, M is mass, we got that, A is acceleration, we got that, 0.5 times 3, we got the right answer. That's exactly how you work the problem. There it is a little bit better to see. Yeah, good job. Let's see what else we can learn. So we've already got Newton's first law, and we've got Newton's second law, F equals MA, Newton's third law says this. You may want to pause the video and write this one down. Newton's third law of motion for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So you'll see them pulling on that rope. As he pulls real hard, his action of pulling this way, the reaction of her is she's going to be pulled this way some. If she pulls harder than him, he's going to be pulled that way. Think of it as two ice skaters. If two ice skaters were standing on the ice and they were standing looking at each other and they push on each other, as one person goes backwards, the other one's going to go backwards as well. And so equal and opposite reaction. So as he's pulling, she's trying to pull as well. And they're going to be they're going to be forces pulling back and forth and back and forth. That's why there's two arrows like that. So they're pulling back and forth on each other. Equal and opposite reaction. Huh. Where does that lead us? Well, let's see. Newton's third law of motion. Here's a couple of uh, things to jot down that might be helpful. Here's a great example. You may want to pause the video real quick and write that one down. All forces come in action-reaction pairs. Notice the guy walking down the sidewalk. His feet push forward, excuse me, feet push backward on the floor and the floor pushes forward on his feet. So to walk, you're pushing against the ground, and the ground is pushing against you. That is the, another great example of equal and opposite reaction. For one thing that's happening, there's something happening 
in another direction. Let's see what that looks like. Here's an example question. A ball moving at 30 meters per second has a momentum of 15 grams times meters per second. Now, don't let these units mess you up. Don't worry about that. The mass of the ball is, well, let's see what's happening. If I look at my formula sheet dealing with Newton's laws, I saw a magic word, momentum. Momentum. See if I can find a formula that has momentum in it. There it is right there. Momentum equals mass times velocity. So P equals MV. Momentum is P. It doesn't matter what letter. I'll just write that formula down. P equals M times V. Momentum equals mass times velocity. All right. Has, let's read the question. Ball has a velocity. Well, there's 30 meters per second. That goes with the V. And a momentum of 15 kilograms times meters per second. There's my X for my question mark. And that's what I'm trying to solve. It says, what is the mass? Well, that's M. That's mass. So the math that we do, it's X times 30. The opposite is divide by 30 meters per second. 30 meters per second. So if I do it on one side, I have to do it on the other side. 30 meters per second. I see the meters per second are gone. They're on top and bottom. 15 divided by 30. Well, on my calculator, 15 divided by 30, answer I get 0.5. Is there an answer? Yes, 0.5 kilograms. I got that answer. Let's see how we did. Formula, momentum equals mass times velocity. We got that. Plug the numbers in. We got 15 on that side, and we got 30 on that side. The answer? 0.5 kilograms. We got it exactly right. Well, what you just learned is Newton's laws and how they work. In the next session, uh, you're going to try a couple of these on your own. Good luck. You'll do great.